8.3 billion metric tons. That's the amount of plastic produced so far in the history of mankind. 8.3 billion metric tons. That's enough to fill the Empire State Building from base to radio antenna 25,000 times. The Eiffel Tower 822,000 times. The Petronas Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur close to 225,000 times. And the Statue of Liberty from pedestal to torch 37 million times. All this plastic waste is destroying marine lives and ecosystems, killing up to a million people a year and affecting 44% of marine bird species alone. But that's not all. If the plastic industry were a nation, it would be the fifth worst carbon polluter in the world. That's the enormity of the plastic pollution problem. My name is Shreyan Mitra. I'm a student at Adrian C. Wilcox High School, and today I'll be talking about using our country's foreign policy as a device for mitigating the global plastic pollution problem. Now, you might be wondering why you are hearing about such a topic from a high schooler. This is why. Left on its own, the plastic industry is slated to grow by 40% in the next 10 years alone. By 2050, and that is within many of our lifetimes, there are going to be more plastic particles in the ocean than even the number of fish. Plastic pollution is a menace that will affect members of my generation and it needs an immediate and effective solution. Plastic produced by one country quickly spreads everywhere through waterways and finds their way to the ocean. Plastic is not biodegradable. Once it's there, the plastic waste stays in the ocean for up to 5,000 years. As time passes, plastic fragments break down into smaller and smaller pieces and becomes microplastic. Then, ocean currents take these microplastics everywhere. This is why plastic waste can be found on every continent, including Antarctica. But why foreign policy? Why not improve consciousness about plastic mismanagement or invest in trash cleanup systems that would recycle plastic? While those efforts are beneficial, it's important to understand that plastic pollution is not a local but a global problem. The goal of the foreign policy would be to work with our partners and allies worldwide and eventually lead the world towards a holistic, broad-based international agreement on curbing plastic pollution. In fact, recently in a UN resolution, 140 countries worldwide clamored for such a treaty. And this is why, while individual communities can and must do their part to help, recycling alone can do nothing to stop the scourge of the plastic problem around the world. For plastic waste to really be handled on the international level, we as a country must exert our influence around the globe. To do this in a coherent manner, we must formulate a foreign policy engaging other governments to act in this regard. Unfortunately, Today we do not have such a coherent foreign policy for dealing with plastic pollution. And because of this, the United States has missed the opportunities to lead in this area, staying away from international treaties like the Basel Agreement and staying absent in a global dialogue for a future accord. Even though some progress is being made domestically through legislation such as the Save Our Seas 2.0 and Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act, they are neither adequate nor do they address the global nature of the plastic pollution problem. And precisely because of this, I have created a three-point foreign policy, which I will share with you today. 
Policy one, reduce. Reduce global plastic waste going into the oceans to 4 million metric tons by the year 2030. Policy two, fund. Set up a global economic fund to aid in the phasing out of plastic. And policy three, execute. Implementation of such a solution using financial incentives or embargoes as necessary. Now let's dive deeper into these goals and how they fit with the rest of the foreign policies of this country. The first part of my foreign policy proposal is to do the obvious, to reduce global plastic production. The lesser the amount of plastic produced, the lesser the amount of it going into the oceans. But by how much should we reduce? The current rate of discharge is about 8 million metric tons a year. Our goal should be practical rather than too ambitious. A target discharge rate of 4 million metric tons per year seems reasonable. We need to work with our partners and allies to make sure this target remains feasible. Each country should set a viable target for itself based on its capabilities and its dependency on plastic. Once set, each country must maintain complete transparency over its record that can be overseen by the UN or similar body. Needless to say, such an agreement will work the best if there is a monetary incentive. To acknowledge progress, a financial reward system should be set up for smaller countries or countries with high economic dependency on plastic. And this is where my second policy comes into picture. We need to set up a global fund similar to the United Nations Development Program or the United Nations Children's Fund of today. This global fund will have four different goals. One, to reward and encourage countries who achieve or exceed their goals in plastic containment. Two, to subsidize major plastic producers so that they can decrease the amount of plastic they produce with minimal damage to their economies. Globally, the plastic economy employs millions of people and leaving them without any alternative will not work. Number three, to subsidize local available plastic alternatives and fund research for more advanced alternatives in the future and most importantly, four, to incentivize development of plastic alternative materials. What constitutes a good plastic alternative material? First of all, it should be durable, yet biodegradable. It must be cheap, versatile, and globally producible, just like the material it would replace. Or in other words, it must have all the goodness of plastic, but not the perils. We are a few steps away from such a material, but there are many leads that look promising. For example, bagasse, a waste product of sugarcane production, mycelium, a mushroom root-based material, and many other plant-based and natural materials are all possible solutions. There are two ways in which these materials can be utilized. Countries that are major producers of alternative products can be subsidized by economic powers to export these products to countries that need them, creating additional revenue for the producing country. How would such a fund be financed? It could be supported by donations by economic powers, a global organization like the United Nations, or a global tax on plastic exports. After all, a million plastic bottles are bought every minute. A foreign policy might exist, but someone needs to enforce it. The third part of the foreign policy would deal with a country that does not meet its stated goal deliberately. In such cases, other nations can enforce economic sanctions and other repercussions. Let's also keep in mind that the agreement is completely voluntary. To help ensure a flexible platform, a country is allowed to leave the agreement. But of course, they would lose any economic incentive to stay within the agreement. The foundations that I am laying out 
today are only the first step towards implementation. A lot of hard work and countless hours of international negotiation must follow. These policies must be a stated priority goal of all subsequent foreign policy decisions of our country and we should ensure that any preceding agreement that contradicts this policy be amended to comply with this goal. Can we eliminate the monstrous scourge of 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic within our lifetimes? The answer could be yes, if only we utilize our country's foreign policy to its fullest.